start by giving you the first two words of a four-word cliche. And if you would, and I could tell by the fact you all arrived at such an early hour that you've got plenty of energy, I'd like you to supply the second two words. All right, the first two words are, here today, well, that's the way it used to be. Now it's here today, gone today. All right? We live in a world where technology is transforming the economy so swiftly, where information is changing and turning on its head our old ideas that you can't depend that yesterday's themes, yesterday's ideas, yesterday's products, yesterday's customers and services will still be on your side when you go to bed this evening. I drive past a 7-Eleven in the morning and I thought, you know, it's stunning. They chose that name because they bragged about how hard they worked. By God, we're up at 7 in the morning and we're not leaving till 11 at night. Now I drive past and I think, what a lazy bunch of layabouts, come on. No, but would any of you, would any of you start a business these days called 7-Eleven? How limiting. What does that say about your devotion to your customer, your devotion to service? Five years in our housing boom, Caucasian Americans have bought 9% more homes. That's great. African Americans have bought 25% more homes. Hispanic Americans have bought 36% more homes. You talk about property and casualty insurance and where the new emerging markets are, that's where it is. Toyota is building a truck plant outside San Antonio, going to hire thousands of Hispanic Americans who are going to be driving Toyota trucks. Toyota is doing it to create a loyalty, to create a fan base right, among, among that ethnic group. And they're all going to be looking for insurance. And you've got to ask whether you've got the team who can fight and compete in order to get that business, because as Willie Sutton said, the bank robber, why do you rob banks? He says, where the money is, that's where the money is. Overriding theme here, it's when you've got big changes, times people, there are enormous opportunities. There are risks, yeah, but opportunities too. The U.S. population is going to grow by 58 million in the next 20 years. China will grow by almost a whole U.S. Look at the, the, the last bullet points there about demographics. Today in the U.S., as the baby boomers move towards retirement, already today, across the fruited plain, we have more golf courses than McDonald's. More, uh, this isn't a forecast for Southern California. Wherever you live, more golf courses than McDonald's. All right, why have I gone through these themes, the scissors economy, the light economy, the Berlin Wall? Because they do have a real impact on how our economy performs. Because of the transformations and because of the investments in technology, Productivity has astounded the experts. Richard Branson, chairman of Vir and founder of Virgin Records. You're in your office a couple years ago, and one of your employees calls you. Uh, Sir, we have a problem. Uh, the, we opened that store in Times Square in New York, and it turns out we're finding out that kids aren't going to our store. They're ordering on computers something, Amazon, Dota. What? How can that be? We need to get into that. All right, a couple months passes. Pass. Uh, sir, uh, we found out now the kids, they're not just ordering the prepackaged CDs and records, they're deciding which songs they want the artist to sing on that CD before they're going to buy. What? We need to figure out how to get into that. Do it. A few months more passed. Uh, sir, they're not just ordering one artist on a CD, they're, they're kind of being their own producers, mi mixing and matching and then ordering it. What? How do we handle that? Fix it. We need to get into that. Finally, uh, sir, you know what? They're not even buying anything. They're just downloading it for free. So now, oh my, you know, get me my balloon, right? It's like, what, what, what are we going to do? What are you going to do to maintain your business model in a world that's moving so quick? It was very common to have lecturers strut on stage and write articles in the Harvard Business Review about disintermediation. Uh, we all were going to be cut out. We all, especially in the financial sector, we're all going to be cut out. What have we learned? In a modern economy, you know what? Everybody's a middle person. Everybody, none of you have got dirty fingernails because you were out near Santa Barbara last night working on an oil rig. None of you have got dirty fingernails because you were in Salinas, California, you know, harvesting the crops. Virtually nobody in the United States, nobody in the United States gets their fingers dirty and says, and, and can say, I'm not a middle person. Does that mean we're all going to be out of work? No. 
but it means we as middle people have a new challenge, a new burden, a new obligation. What is it? It's very, very simple. It's hard, but it's very, very simple. We have to be able to answer a simple direct question from our prospective clients and our current clients. And that is this question, quote, why do I need you? President uh, who doesn't suffer from deficit attention disorder. Uh, spending for the bloated government, spending has been galloping along at a 12% pace. I think the biggest deficit in Washington is along the spine, frankly. Uh, the Senate, get this, the, spent, the Senate spent $200,000 building a playground in North Pole, Alaska. Now there's a good idea, right? In the lower 48, 100 million fat Americans are waddling around with Twinkies hanging out of their mouths, and the Senate buys a thigh master for Santa Claus. Right? <laughs>